Hi, this is Marie. I'm one of your Marker Pop colorists. I have a mini tutorial for you today. Today I want to share a fun, affordable tool that I have really been enjoying and it will help you make amazing backgrounds. I want to show the difference that happens when you can just add a fun, simple background to your image. It'll allow it to pop you can coordinate it with your designer paper or cardstock or even the colors that you use in your focal image. I'll be able to show you how simple this spritzing tool is. I'm going to be using this adorable collection of images. I'll be using one of them called uh, from the Bootastic collection and I will be using the sentiment. I have stamped my image with Memento Tuxedo Black and this is the Tim Holtz Spritzing Tool. For those of you who um, have always wondered about um, airbrushing, this will give you an opportunity to see if you like airbrushed backgrounds. And if you find you use it a lot, you may want to upgrade. Now this is an image that I've stamped and you can see it's it would make a beautiful card as it is just really cute a sweet image but um the background is um left white and i want to show you how it transforms when you just add a fun and whimsical background makes a cute card either way but here's some options now to mask your image, I just stamp my image on um, a sticky note or, it, or it, sometimes I apply a little bit of scotch tape rolled up in the back just to give it something to adhere to the focal image and you place it on top. Now when you cut this out, you'll want to cut it right on the, the black line so that uh, you won't have a space between your background and your focal image. Now we're going to be applying the um, a marker um, through the hole and tightening the little screw here that will allow you to get a nice secure kind of lock on your marker and the tip needs to go right over the air hole. And when we position this spritzer, I've discovered it works best if you hold it exactly upright. Not the marker, but the air hole on the spritzer. And so I'm uh, videoing it so that you can look directly down and see exactly how I'm holding it. You see that screw? It also has a centerpiece that can go in for smaller markers. Now. When you use the chisel end, you can notice that you ha you got a more diffuse kind of um, a spray. And, but I want one that has more of a, a speckled look to it. So I applied my brush end. And again, secured it and holding it exactly upright from um, the paper and allowing the air hole to point downward. And you'll notice that the speckled edges from the brush give you a very different effect than the chisel. Now I always suggest you test it first on some scratch paper but then you'll notice that now as I have moved on to my actual focal image and you know we masked 
the little uh, witch so that we don't get any spray on her because you'll want to color her up afterwards. But um, you get a lot of little kind of a speckled dot with this brush. And if I held it back further, I would have more of a, a diffuse coverage. Now um, I'm going to add some orange. And this is a, a YR616. And we're just going to go over here random. I'm going to give it a more of a dense coverage than I did with my sample card and I um, will be having a, a, a dense coverage by holding it closer to my focal image. I've discovered it's best if you allow the ball to completely recoil after squeezing it. Um, your hand doesn't get tired that way and you also get a better airflow. Okay. Now I'm going to take my YR16 and I'm going to put some added dots onto my image. If you know me, I'm crazy about backgrounds and adding dots to my background, whether it's in white or other colored Copic markers, multi-liners, it's just one of my favorite things that I always do with my backgrounds. And you'll notice that I'm holding it straight up and down. And the longer I hold it, the larger my dot. You do not need a lot of pressure. Just change the length of time you hold the dot there. And I think it gives it a really unique look to have different size dots. If I'm doing a few, I like to keep them in odd numbers one, three, five, but I'm doing them pretty random on this, so I don't need to be so careful. I'm using my T10. It's a very dark color of my um, toner gray. And I think it's giving it a really fun and whimsical look. I always think of witches as having a, a pot of brew somewhere and the bubbles coming up, part of the, the bubbles from the potion that she's cooking up. So I think it gives it a very quick, fun, coordinated, whimsical look. Now I'm going to lift the mask off and your focal image would be ready for you to color in any way you choose. I like to put my masked image in a little uh, envelope and save it for future stamping. Now you'll see if I matted this image how the black mat just pulls out the background and gives it a kind of a cute look. And again, with mine, I held the other one back further and got more of a splatter look. Any marker will work, particularly those with like a brush or a chisel end. But I used Copic on this case, but you can use your distress markers, uh, just about anything. And it has a smaller barrel that you put on the inside for your smaller markers. You could try any of your markers that you have at home, particularly those with a brush or a chisel. Your distress markers work terrific. Your uh, Shin Han, your Copic. Just place it in the smaller barrel, tighten, and have the brush over the air hole. Experiment with a different distance between um, for your misting and just have fun. Thank you for watching and if you see this on YouTube, I hope you like, you share, and you subscribe. Thank you.
Thank you.